Hey everyone, this is Three Questions with Eric Haynes and Amy Cordes. We got music, everything. All right. Okay, so people don't necessarily know this, but before we do the podcast, um, I do some like preliminary questions. I just kind of talk and just see what's going on. And basically, everything I said about the both of you was wrong. I got the wrong school district, the wrong city, you know, basically wrong state. Like, I'm surprised I got the country right. So I was like pretty excited about that, right? I think. I mean, maybe, did I get the country right at least? I get that like one? I think okay. so. So then we got like the, you know, the positive sandwich, right? Hey, like at least you got, you know, you know North America. I know you're there too. Okay. All right. So, hey, Eric and Amy uh, from Frederick County Public Schools in Maryland, uh, in the Maryland area. And Amy, you told me this. It's close to the mountains, close to the water, correct? Yeah, we got it all. All right. That's like maybe, maybe we should move there. All right. So here we go. Okay. So we're actually going to start with three questions. And uh, before we talk about this, we're, we just kind of discuss who's going to be taking what. So Eric, when you think of a teacher that inspired you, you know, in your career, in the work that you do, who's someone that you think of and why? Well, I think of a teacher that I had in uh, at Thomas Johnson High School. Um, she was a Latin teacher, uh, Miss Charlotte Remus. And uh, she was everyone's favorite. and. And, you know, because why would, else would you take like five courses of Latin, um, <laughs> especially if you're not planning to major in a world language? And, and, you know, as I think back of like, why was she so instrumental and, and mm. impactful in students' lives? It was, she was just always so genuine. You know, she would mm. tell us stories and she was just very real with the students and was always drawn to that. And, um, yeah, I think she really stands out as a teacher you know, had an impact not only on me, but clearly on students around me and, and throughout her long career. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you on the spot. And Amy's going to appreciate this. I'm going to put you on the spot. You got to drop. Can you drop some Latin? Can you drop, do you got some Latin in there? You know, it's not a spoken language, right? It's a, it's, it's all written. So what, Vidi right. Vici, right? The, I came, I saw, I conquered. Okay. Okay. Well, there you go. So like, it's kind of like, yeah. Okay. So, you're Roman, awesome. then, yeah, right. absolutely. so you said it's Charlotte Remus, correct? That's the correct. Name? Charlotte Remus. <laughs> if you listen to the podcast, you knew the shout out button was coming here, right? Like it's very important. You got to use the button. So I, I love that. I love that connection of like being uh, genuine and authentic. And I think a lot of times uh, when we talk about the notion of relationships, it is really imperative that we know who our kids are, right? Understand their experiences, their gifts, what they bring to the classroom. But I think a lot of times the conversation stops there. And I think part of it too is that the, the kids know the teacher. They understand who they are. And I think part of that too is that connection. And there's kind of this misnomer, like when you're starting your career, like, hey, you got to kind of keep this guard up. And and I think it's, I think there's like a difference between, you know, building like a reciprocated relationship where you're respected, you know, people know who you are, uh, as opposed to like your best friends with the kids. Right. And, and that, that's something. And so I, I really appreciate, um, that you share that. I, I always wondered what it took to be, you know, everybody's favorite teacher. Right. So like, maybe, you know, did, did any of us ever achieve that, you know, even for a day in, in our school career? So, uh, I, I love that. So good, good shout out to, Charlotte Remus. I want to do like a Latin sound, but I don't know what that would be. So he's going to do double air horn. All right, Amy. So when you think about administrators and you think about um, some of the people that you work with, maybe today, someone that you had as a student, who's an administrator that really inspired you and why? Um, the one person I think of all the time that really changed how I looked at how I was doing things, what inspired me and continued me on, like, I think the path I'm on today is Andrea Mucci. She worked with us on coaching. She worked on us, uh, with us on flexibility. And I guess when I look at her, she just embodies this positive vibe all the time. She was relentless to make sure we were student-centered, constantly making sure that we were filling teacher's cups, which was really important because mm -hmm. I was a coach. So I just think when I look at her and this ability to keep everybody positive, keep everybody's cup filled so that we could mm -hmm. really help 
new teachers focus on student-centered learning, um, I just can't credit her enough for being there for all of us as we helped teachers who helped students every day. And it's Andrea, is it Andrea Mucci? Is that Mucci, correct? Yeah. Andrea Mucci. <laughs> Getting a little shout out button from Amy here. So here's something I, I was thinking about this as you're, you're sharing kind of that story. Um, there's almost this weird kind of like, oh, like toxic positivity. And I understand kind of like, I, I, I kind of, um, would equate that. Like, I understand that, but it's like, I think sometimes it's like overly labeled. Right. So like the way that I would define it the best is that, you know, um, if you were in a house that was on fire and you were saying like, Ooh, it's warm in here, that's probably toxic positivity, right? Like you're not addressing the situation. Whereas I kind of see kind of that positive nature is like, Hey, the house is on fire. We need to figure out a way to like take care of this. Right. And I kind of see that, that difference if that kind of makes sense. So like when you, when you think of that, like, can you give a kind of like a description, like that, like what, what is that positive nature? What did that look like from Andrea? She, she was always goal oriented. Mm -hmm. She never sugarcoated things. She right. just knew that there was a time and a place to work through the challenges. Yeah. And there was a time and a place for us to make sure that when we were working with people, we were always putting our best foot forward because yeah. we knew that at the end of the day, if you work with people and you're positive and you're helping them go in the right direction, they're right. going to take that too. And they're going to take it into their classrooms. And I think for her, she just has this energy about her that's just contagious. Right. So this was just who she was as a person. And we were just lucky enough to be recipients of that positivity and the okay. energy. Yeah. And there's a, there's actually a great quote and I'm going to mess it up from Mark and Angel. And it's, it's basically saying, and you, you kind of summarize this is that being positive doesn't mean you ignore the negative. It means that you find a, you know, you find a solution to it. Like where you find, and I'll put up the actual quotes cause I like mess it up terribly, but just kind of thinking about that, you do have to find those ways because like you can, you can complain all you want. It doesn't solve anything. Right. And actually, in fact, like I, there's places where people just, when they hear complaints nonstop and it doesn't mean don't address issues. Right. And I think a lot of people get mixed up that they actually will just go away from that space. They'll take away and, you know, it does kind of bring people down. It is actually saying like, Hey, here's the situation. we got to figure out a way for it because, you know, as you said, Andrew is very uh, student focused and that's what it's all about is helping our kids, you know, to achieve, um, you know, the best opportunities in our schools because of the work that we do. And so the last question, I'll actually start with Eric, cause I'm going to ask both of you this, when you look back at all the work that you've been doing today and, uh, Eric is the supervisor of innovative learning for Frederick County Schools, and Amy is the supervisor of innovative solutions. And we're going to talk about like what is the difference between those two jobs uh, in the next podcast. Um, if you can go back and talk to your first year self from all your experiences, what advice would you give to first year teacher Eric? Well, I've learned that th reaching out to your colleagues is really important, like leaning on that professional learning network. Um, I've just seen so much success of teachers over the years, uh, really leaning on each other and um, not trying to go it alone. Mm -hmm. And I, I think also on top of that, I've learned that um, it's not one or two teachers that have all the expertise and knowledge. There are all different types of talent and um, skill sets. And so it's about figuring out, you know, who has what. And so that you can lean on the right person, go to that person. Uh, you're talking about positivity. I mean, mm -hmm. there's people that come to mind that were, uh, you know, if you're having a bad day, they were the person you talk to. Right. Or if you need a lesson plan idea, you might go to someone different. Mm -hmm. And um, the more that you have those conversations and really build that that professional learning network, that's, that's only going to serve you well uh, throughout all of your career, but certainly in that first year. Um, being able to kind of lean into that professional learning network as much as possible. Yeah. And it, you actually, your explanation reminds me of a quote from uh, Steven Johnson. He says, chance favors the connected mind, right? And basically the more connected you are, the more solutions that you actually can find through that. And I, I really appreciate how you say, you know, there's different people for different things and you have those connections and, and really imperative to utilize them. And so Amy, go back to your first year teacher self. What advice would you give to first year teacher Amy? 
wow, what would I do? So I agree with Eric wholeheartedly, like professional learning network, you have to have one, you have to spend time with other people to get connected to. And I think that's really important. And I would also say the key word throughout your career is flexibility. Mm -hmm. Flexibility, because I think when you come in as a new teacher, you feel the, the need to go through the curriculum, have everything in its place in these or but the reality is the key to your success is being able to look at things, iterate, be flexible, learn more about your students, adjust, adjust. And that's really what helps you make the best lessons, make the best learning experiences for students is really listening to your students and being agile in the classroom. And that requires you to be flexible early on. So actually, you know, it's really interesting about what you just said. I'm thinking about because we were talking about the podcast before and you're like, well, you don't know what questions are coming your way. I'm like, well, I don't really know you. I'm going to figure them out. Right. And I think it's, I hope that in some ways that I model that flexibility in learning, because um, basically every time, you know, I have different guests on the podcast, I want to know a little bit about them. I want to know who they are. I don't want to just say like, Hey, you're on my show. Uh, here's the questions that I want to know. I want to know who you are and like, basically how can I bring out the best stories from you? How can I bring out the best ideas? So hopefully even, you know, through this podcast and like, I I've seen actually, um, people model this in, they do this with students now, and it's really kind of cool to see this evolve into other things. Um, it is, I think a lot of times, uh, actually, if you say you want to do a podcast with me and you tell me the questions ahead of time, I like, I'm totally opposite. I'm like, Oh God. Like, don't make me think about this. Like, just let's just have a conversation, right? Like, get, kind of get to know each other. So uh, I love that advice because I think it's true, not just in the classroom, but so many aspects of life. But uh, Eric and Amy, it is awesome to have you on the podcast, to connect with you. We connected through uh, our mutual good friend, Dr. Katie Martin. Going to give her a little <laughs> shout out. And we'll see. Like, let's actually, hey, Katie Martin, if you just, if you listen to this, make sure you comment on YouTube. But if you don't comment on YouTube, that means I know you didn't listen to it. And then, and then we'll see, we'll see, then we'll, then we'll know. Okay. So like, make sure you comment Katie Martin. We'll see if you follow my podcast. Anyways, uh, thank you so much for being on the podcast. I look forward uh, to talking more with you and for other people getting to know more about your work, but uh, thank you for everyone for listening as well. There we go. Amy, that was awesome, right? Thanks, everybody.